Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad you could join us for our time together this morning. Uh, a couple things to share with you uh, before we continue our time together. Um, you can see that we have choir back with us this morning, so we're looking forward to hearing from the choir. And they're clapping for you. Before you even sing, it's, oh, yes, exactly. it's better that way, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and also, next Sunday morning, um, Reverend Mick Oldhauser will be here, and he'll be bringing the message uh, next Sunday. So hopefully you'll join us next Sunday for worship again at 12.15. If you smell bacon, it's because we had confirmation breakfast this morning, and we had pancakes and bacon. Well, well, this is what I had. I had pancakes and bacon, and then I had pink, I had eggs and bacon and toast. And I think I've only had one cup of coffee. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, but it was really good because we had confirmation breakfast. I have to tell you, I'm not used to eating that kind of breakfast before church. So if I nod off up here, that's the reason. Okay, so anyways, it was really good um, breakfast this morning. So thanks for that. So if you smell bacon, that's why. And one last thing. i got to come back here, though. Today, Gabby, you need to see that. So her, it's all me. So really, paper. not the yellow paper. Oh my God. Today, and he told me it was okay, so now it's on him. This happy 74th birthday. So, I invite you to join me in our peace this morning. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be in our midst. Peace be in our very souls. Peace be the light on our path. Peace be the way of our world. Peace be with you. And also with you. Our review this morning is called What If the Church? What if we're known more for what we love instead of what we hate? Would that be a difference? What if we spent more time loving people and less time being angry with them? Would that make a difference? What if we gave unconditionally of our time, our talent, our treasures? Would that make a difference? What if we shared the difference? Jesus has made in our lives and stop pushing away those who aren't there yet. Would that make a difference? What if we walked in the steps of our Savior, sitting with the broken, caring for the poor, loving the lost? Would that make a difference? We live in the midst of ruins, surrounded by brokenness, pain, and loss. It's a moment made for us, a calling we were created to answer, not with judgment, not with harsh words or self-righteousness, but with love, the love of Jesus. What if the church acted like the church? Would that make a difference?
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Is God not in Zion? Is there no ruler to lead us? Search for the Lord. Our God, God waits for every least expected. Is there no mom in Gilead? Is there no leader to help us? I ask to the Lord, for God hears our pleas. Is there no hope left to be found? Is there nowhere to turn? Place your trust in the Lord, His compassion comes speedily to meet us. Come worship the one who hears our pleas. We will enter God's gates with hope and gladness. Where we have this morning is immortal, invisible, God only wise.
But I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of dishonest love, so that when it's gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. <coughs> whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful as much. Also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with a dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in wealth. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us. For the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Our anthem this morning for Welcome to Church Sunday is All Are Welcome. And if you recall, we've done this a little bit before, and so when we sing the refrain, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place, you're welcome to sing along. Verse 
first of your spawn. What's that? First of your spawn. You want? Yeah. <laughs> So how are you guys this morning? Is, is school going good? Yeah. Mostly? Yeah. So I want to ask you if you know what a peacemaker is. Do you know what a peacemaker is? No? Does anybody know what a peacemaker is? Hmm. What's a what's a peacemaker? Does anybody know what a peacemaker is? Does anybody here claim to be a peacemaker? Oh, goodness. So let's say that Manny and Manny, you guys wouldn't fight, would you? What if they were, what if they were having a fight, an unexpected fight, okay? And Oliver said, now girls, What's the problem? Can we just sit down and talk it out? Could you do that all? Yeah, I think you could. And that's what a peacemaker is, kind of, right? Do you guys know? Now let me ask you, do you know what a troublemaker is? Yes. Oh. Are you now all of do you have your hand up because you are one or because you know what it is? You ain't he is one. Did you know that? Anybody here claim to be a troublemaker? Oh. Tom Dunavant, Kenny Miller. Anybody else claim to be a troublemaker? Randy. Yeah. Look, I know some of you. I know, I know all of you actually. So you all. So none of you claim to be peacemakers, and none of you claim to be troublemakers. What are you? Don't you have to be one or the other? I mean, you can't always sit on the sidelines, right? I mean, I mean that's a bad plan. Well, so, Oliver, how are you a troublemaker? You, you make a lot of trouble during the day for your teacher, for your classmates, for your brother. Oh, yeah. Well, any, anybody claim to be a troublemaker for their brother? Kenley. Uh, is that true, Kenley? Yeah, he's going, yep, absolutely. Well, the Bible says to us, and this is what John and Lisa are going to talk to you about a little bit, maybe, is that the Bible says that we should make every effort in life to live as peacefully as possible. Now, that doesn't mean that we always have to agree, right? I mean, we don't always agree, right? But what it means is, is that like I said with Oliver and the two girls, that you might find middle ground, right? You might say, yeah, okay, we'll work it out. The Bible says to live as much in peace as possible. And you know what the Bible says how you do that? You pray for each other, right? You pray for each other. So I would ask you guys, before you go up with John and Lisa, think about one person you could pray for this week. Just one person you could pray for this week that you don't always have peace with. So it could be your brother, and it could be your brother, or it could be somebody else, or it could be any of us. You know, we have those people, right? Y'all have those people who you just can't find peace with? Coworkers, neighbors, cousins, <laughs> spouses. I challenge you to pray for those people this week. Okay, I invite you to pray with me. Thank you, God, for all the blessings you give to us. Help us when we're troublemakers and help us to be peacemakers. Bless these children and their families in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, all right, so, Kate, I need you to do one thing for me before you go. Go up on the altar, right behind us, and you see that white candle that's burning? The big white candle? Blow it out. The big white one. Yeah, and blow it out. And bring it with you. Now it has oil in it, so you got to carry it straight up and down. And bring it with you, and you're going to take it upstairs with John and Lisa. Okay, all of you can go. Thank you.
So our prayer concerns are shared with you this morning. Uh, before we pray together, uh, we continue to pray for Marie and for Dick and for Catherine, for Eileen, Indiana, uh, for the war in Ukraine, for families in crisis. A couple to add to you, um, Matt Holhouse's uncle has been diagnosed with cancer and needs our prayers. Um, I mentioned last week my cousin Wayne, who lives in Kansas, um, his death is imminent. Um, he's full of cancer everywhere. And I believe he's just a year younger than me. And their family needs our prayers. And also, uh, Ben Burney, who's a young man, um, age 42, worked with Jason and Gwen, um, probably worked on our landscaping, um, has four kids. Um, he died yesterday. And so their family needs our prayers as well. God of peace, make us channels of your peace. Make us channels of peace that brings love and pardon, brings forgiveness where it's difficult, brings hope, brings light in the midst of darkness brings joy where there's sadness. Oh God, make us channels of your peace. As we live our lives, as you call us to be faithful, as you surround us with your love and your peace. Oh God, may our continued prayer this week be that you would make us channels of peace and that we would do whatever it took to live at peace with you and with one another. Even those one another's that we can't see eye to eye with. Oh God, there are many prayers in our hearts. There's grief and sorrow. We, we long for your presence as Jeremiah. Wondering some days indeed, is there a bone in Gilead to make the wounded whole? Oh God, we pray for your healing in us. We pray for the balm of your love and grace. Our continued prayers, God, that we give to you for Marie and Dick and Catherine, Eileen, Indiana, Matt's uncle, my cousin Wayne and his family, the family of Ben Bernie. The war in Ukraine, families that remain in crisis. For many others, God, who, who need to know, simply need to know 
that there is a channel of peace that comes to them. And we need to know it too, God, in this place. In our own lives where we're scattered, it seems there's not enough time. Too many balls trying to keep afloat. Too many arrows. Be the channel of peace for us. Be the healing balm for us. Be grace for us, God. Grace. That inward thing that just reminds us in all of our moments that you are close to us. Give us your grace, God. As we pray all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, and so calls us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. this this week yesterday morning I decided to not preach on this particular Timothy that's in the bulletin but to preach on the next part of Timothy which is first Timothy chapter 6 verses 6 through 19 and it's the young it's the old preacher if you will giving advice to the young preacher about how he would like him to live and we hear these words of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all of this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of of eternal life to which you were called and for which you were made, the good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the presence of God who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. It is he who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who are rich in the present age, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. I invite you to pray with me.
Oh God, bless these words to us this day as you challenge us to live. Speak to us anew in these moments as we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So the writer of Timothy kind of initially hits us pretty hard. And I think he talks to us especially about how to have the bare essentials in life. Did you ever go into something thinking you were unprepared? You ever go into something thinking you were unprepared? Yeah, and I have too. It's, it's not fun, is it? To go into something not just thinking you're unprepared, but knowing you're unprepared. It's like walking through that door to take the test you didn't study for. Anybody ever do that? Car Cardi's shaking her head. Malia, she's not gonna confess. Well, maybe she is. Carly often says to me when I see her, she just said Wednesday night to me when we were out there around the campfire Wednesday night, she said to me, Jim, you gotta help me. Because she, she had, did you get that paper written? It's in, progress. it's in progress. So she had to write a paper because they talked about Queen Esther. Y'all know who that is in the Bible? And Carly has to write just a one page paper. Kelsey, I thought it was Kelsey Rossman. I thought one page. I, I mean, triple spaced in font 16. Oh, well, maybe not. And she said, Jim, I have to write about examples in the Bible. I think I get this right. Where it's better to listen than to speak. Is that? When to be silent and not to be silent. When to be silent and when to? And not be silent. And so I said, well, I gave her a lot. I gave her a couple examples, not biblical examples. You know, the example that you've often heard probably that if God wanted us to not be good listeners. God would have given us, you know, God gave us one mouth and two ears, right? There are lots of things we could say about that. And so she, we always say, Carly says, I'm not prepared, but she always does pretty well though, right, Mindy? Yeah, that's what I thought. But sometimes, you know, we're just not sure we're prepared in all of the circumstances. The writer Timothy first talks to us initially about the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, that's often used to abuse the love of money. And it's not at all what the writer of Timothy was about. We need money, right? We need paychecks, right? We need what we have. What the writer of Timothy says to us is that in eagerness to be rich, as he puts it, we wander away from faith. We wander away from what it is that God's calling us to do and how God's calling us to live. And then he says to Timothy, this young preacher, shun all of this. And then I think what he does for us is gives for us the bare essentials about how we're called to live, to be prepared for what God's calling us to pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. If we're to be prepared for what God's giving to us, if we're being prepared for living our lives, then it's these bare essentials. See, I think one of our challenges in the Christian faith is that we don't always do what it is we're called to do. We don't always speak out because I think more often than not, we think we're unprepared. You ever think that? You know, I don't know enough about the Bible to talk about it. I'm not, not, really, not really sure in my faith enough to, to talk about it. The writer gives us these bare essentials in life. Righteousness, godliness, 
faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Now, it may be hard to have all of those all of the time, right? And to be that compact in our lives that we're always prepared with those bare essentials. But I think he challenges us in this to think about what this means. Let's put it in terms that maybe we can understand. The writer of Timothy is calling us in our lives to be humble. To be humble in such a way that to think of all the opportunities that have come our way, all the gifts we've been given, and to share them with others. To live our lives in such a way that this idea of the bare essentials in life are gifts we use to share with others. God calls us, I think, in this text to be realistic. There aren't guarantees about the future. There are no guarantees, right? Yesterday, well, for the last couple of days, my great niece was here again. And I think both of, you might know, but both of her parents are commercial airline pilots. Um, Jake, her husband, my niece's husband flies for Delta. And he's just been in training. He's going to start flying an Airbus. Y'all know what an Airbus is? It's those big monster things, you know? And Rachel flies for American. And they, they're very confident in what they do. Yesterday, they also own their own plane. And so yesterday, they, they flew from Ann Arbor to the Sydney airport to pick up Maeve. And so her uncle, me, I get there really early because, you know, I'm worried about it. So I'm at the Sydney airport and I'm waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting. And then if you sit at the outside of the Sydney airport, if you've ever done that, there's a speaker on the outside. You can hear the planes calling in. And so we were sitting there and I heard her say whatever all the fancy words she has to say. They don't have to say those fancy words, probably Jane, right? Whatever. And then she said, 10 miles to the north. And I thought that took forever to go 10 miles. And all of a sudden, she's coming down the runway. And so they landed, got their stuff, filled the plane up with fuel, got everything loaded, loaded little Miss Maeve in the plane, and they got in and closed the doors, and the plane wouldn't start. And so they got the mechanic, and he charged it with a little thingy, and the plane started, and without a worry in the world, away they go. And I'm thinking, man, I think they ought to just like not fly this plane back to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Like they should get in my car and I should drive them home, you know? But nope, Rachel is very confident. And so away they went, took off, came around, and I stood and watched them until I couldn't see them anymore. And I said to Rachel when she got ready to leave, you will text me when you get home. And Kelsey said, yep, you better, because if you don't, that makes it mad. Because I tell Kelsey to text me when she gets home, that she's out late. She lives five minutes from me. Do you know that she forgets most often? She lives five minutes from me. And I said, Rachel, or Kelsey said, yeah, Rachel, he'll get really mad if you don't text him. Well, an hour later, I got a text and they were home. I got to thinking about all of that. About being realistic, about knowing there are no guarantees in life. Rachel and Jake are very competent and confident in their skills. And away they went. And she would say to me, if she was here right now, Uncle Jim, you really worry about nothing because we are fine. I think the writer says to us to be realistic in life, to live in such a way that we live our lives to the fullest. Our peace and our stability, the writer would say to us, are not tied to our financial status. 
they're tied to who God calls us to be. God calls us to be generous. God calls us to be faithful in all of our lives. And so I think about all of us in this tumultuous world that we live in. And it is, right? It's tumultuous. The news comes at us 24-7, right? Even when we don't want it, in the middle of the night, it comes to us. And we live in this, this tumultuous culture. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't know what to do with it all. But then I'm reminded what the writer of Timothy has to say to us. In the midst of all of that, in us, we should have the bare essentials that helps us deal with all of those things in our lives. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. And this is what he says then. And I think this is important for us to think about as we end this time together. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. What he would really say is to run hard. Later in Timothy, we're actually going to hear this scripture in two weeks. Timothy's parting words. Does anybody know what Timothy's parting words are? You've heard them a million times probably. He says, I've fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the Faith. Have you ever heard those words? That's what the writer says to us. Pursue it. Run towards it. Continue to live it out in your lives. And even when you don't have it figured out, even when you can't possibly muster enough inside of you, even when you're not capable of being a peacemaker, run towards it anyways. Because this call on us to live our lives in this way is important. And I think it helps sustain us in the hardest moments of our lives. It's then, it's then that God moves in us and inches us a little bit forward. Now, I don't know about you, but what works best for me in my life today is to inch a little bit. I'm not good when I get shoved forward. Well, if you shove me, I'm going down. But I'm not good at that. What I'm best at is to do what the writer calls us to do. Pursue. Pursue godliness and righteousness, and love, and faith. Now, for some of us, pursue does mean run. I get that. But often for me, pursue, you know, this means that I've gone from right here to right here. And that pursue may not seem like a lot, but behind me, it's a little bit of space, right? Three feet, Randy, give or take. Two feet, I don't take big strides. Two feet, two foot. It's, it's behind me, right? I've, I've run the race. I think that's what God calls us to in this text. Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, they're going to put me to sleep. I don't love it, but I've done it so many times. You know, that when they say, okay, Jim, and I trust the doctor to do what he's going to do on this crazy knee of mine for the third time. Knowing that my hope is, and his hope, is that maybe I'll pursue a little bit better come a couple weeks from now. <laughs> The bare essentials, I believe, friends, 
are deep inside of us. We just have to have the courage to exercise them. I invite you to pray. Oh God, we, uh, we don't always have it figured out. Sometimes we uh, have a hard time pursuing anything. The news comes at us, life hits us hard. It's a struggle. And yet you just remind us to fight the good fight of faith. And for whatever that looks like in us, God, teeny tiny steps or big bolting runs out the door, Give us what we need in life, God. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. And mostly, give us what we need to fight the good fight of faith. As we give you thanks, God, for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn this morning, I invite you to stand and sing, is more love to you, O Christ. Reconcilers for God. In the name of the God who created us, the Christ, our reconciler, and the force of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated as we listen to Jen play the post. <laughs>